Aha, gobsmack, I told you I was online. Uh-oh, I hope you didn't hear that. Uh, well, most be QDX and QDX and QDX. Most beloved Scotsman. Most, be most beloved Scotsman, uh, is that you? <laughs> it certainly appears to be. I hope so. Yeah, it looks like you. I mean, no, no, excuse me. You look like you. Anyway, and but by the way, if I oh, forget, okay. uh, if I forget, after we go off the radio, I want to talk about something that's sort of private, just me and you and Denise and anybody that's in your room. So we'll leave that for after the show. But uh, I had just asked the chat room if they have any idea why we're getting so much traffic on the uh, on the radio show ad today. And McDime told me he'd take a look at it, but I was busy and I I haven't heard back from him. If anybody does have the answer to that, uh, I'd like to hear it. And uh, if you, how long have you been in the chat room? today or tonight. I guess it's 7 p.m. where you're at. So how long have you been in the chat room recently? Yeah. Uh, just for about the last 20 minutes, I've been like busy, busy, busy over in the other formats and uh, doing some catch up with regards to all the scandal that's flying around the internet. Because it seems that everybody in truth telling land is jumping on each other's heads and tearing each other's throats out and there's accusations flying left, right and center. And it's become like a bloody Girl Scout jamboree. And so uh, I'm kind of, kind of trying to catch up on what's been what, and there's an echo. Okay, I'm getting an echo too. Hang on, I don't know what that could be. Oh, I I'm know. I'm confused. Uh, do you have the live stream show dialed in? That would yeah, but it's muted. Echo. No, no, it's muted. Oh, okay. It says it's better now. Okay. Well, we I see Telstar says we've got seventeen thousand four hundred and twenty-six hits on the radio show just before or just as we were starting and uh, uh -huh. I have I have no idea why uh, I wonder what Mary's talking about but anyway uh, what would you like to talk about today and make sure that at some point you touch on Clan Gocklin because uh, we're getting a lot of interest in that and we've actually got some I know that you and I talked or not you and I talked I know you sent me an email about some household name and you uh, made some comments and that's firmly in my head. But there's a couple of other people that have indicated some interest in the uh, Children's Crusade. One of them you may or may not be aware of, David Hevener, H-E-A-V-E-N-E-R. In fact, I got it. I have no idea who that. Let me answer this phone. But you go ahead and talk. I'll be that Denise will be here. Well, I think I think most of the world's going to speculate who's going to answer be on the phone before we even answer it. But never mind that. <laughs> no. Are we still here? Oh, yes. Are we cheap? Are we taking the call? Anyway, yeah, uh, yeah. I think the reason for the increase in the show ads and the same with the YouTube video is going is gone up uh, exponentially. And it's probably to do with the five G issue, and we had Mark Steele, an English chap who has worked with five G prolifically. He's made uh, his career in the industry, so he does know what he's talking about. He's not talking out of his backside. He's not just a guy that works in his garden shed. He's not just sat on the internet and read up on this or not read up on it as the case of most of these people out there do. They just take it as said from people that tell them what to believe through the television screen instead of digging for themselves, instead of searching for themselves, instead of researching for themselves. They sit down, they get told what to think, how to act, who to believe in, who to disbelieve in, and then next week they're told the complete opposite. So I think the Mark Steele show that we did has had a really good impact, especially on Twitter, because there's a lot of people now there that have gone out there and they found a whole host of other information regarding the 5G technology. Because let me tell you, this 5G technology, it is the end of the planet as we know it, if it's allowed to go ahead because it's insidious, it's one millimeter waves that is going to cook every atom of water, every molecule in your body is going to be affected by this apparatus. 
and it's being rolled out behind our backs under the carpet. They're not telling people about it. They're denying that it's there when they can't deny that it's there because there's 32,500 bloody masts in one city alone. It's been put out across Canary Wharf in the centre of London, the business district, but anyway, that's, a, that's another aside. But the 5G technology, it has to be stopped because if it's not stopped, then you might as well put your head between your legs and kiss your arse goodbye, as they say in Scotland because this stuff is heinous. And so I think that would be the, the, the potential, that's the reason why the show ads have gone up exponentially. So are we back yet? Yes, are we, we are. Are we, are we doing the full talk? You know, sometimes, okay, people, sometimes people like a little humor, correct? I, they certainly do. Well, you know, your suggestion, I wish your suggestion that I stick my head between my legs and kiss my ass <laughs> by there was, there was, hang on, the punchline hadn't gotten here yet. You're laughing at your own humor. Okay, raise your right hand. No, 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 I'm, no, I'm, 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 I'm laughing at your presentation. Okay, well, you're going right, to laugh a little. Right, I think okay, you got your right hand up. It, it, I gobsmack. It, it, I gobsmack. Promise never to laugh until he gives the punchline. Oh, that's a difficult one. I gobsmack. Attempt to promise not to laugh until you deliver the punchline. Okay, I'll start again. So, well, help, so you know, help me God. I think, so help me God. God will help you. Actually, God has helped you. And just between me and you, God wants to help you some more. And uh, we'll talk about that later. But when you said you know. that if we don't master 5G, which we will, and we are, uh, that we should yeah. just, you know, stick our head between our legs and kiss our ass goodbye. Well, the yep. problem was I tried to do that and a huge object got in the way. <laughs> oh, the chair. Yeah. yeah, that would make sense. You don't think <laughs> Sorry. Oh, Denise, Denise, apparently she heard your thing about I promise not to laugh and she, neither, she didn't laugh either. But anyway, enough about that. Uh, I want to say something to James Ken. I started to say it in writing. James Ken said, Perhaps the record views are because of these faces. Okay, well, I've met one, two, three of those faces. I've communicated with a fourth one. Oh, and, yes. And uh, I think that all five of those people have very good reason to feel like a deer in the headlights. And uh, I'm going to ask you a, an easy question. And uh, if you, Gobsmack, were to okay. visit... If you, Gobsmack, were to visit Denise and I, uh, we are fortunate in currently having a five-bedroom home. If we put you in the uh, little suite downstairs that is equivalent to an apartment of about 1,600 square feet, would you think there'd be any listening devices down there, or do you think you'd be free to talk? I think in your domain, I would be very free to talk. You're right. Not like and you surprised me with your acumen and your acuity. Yeah, in our house, you are free to talk. But I've ha I've met several shills, and uh, several shills have been in my house. And uh, I, as of right now today, this very day, not talking about a week ago or next month, but there's nothing, uh -huh. but I think something that would be very useful and would probably drive our viewership up even higher. And I see Telstar is about ready to cross the 18,000 view mark. Uh, wow. I, I think it would be useful if the shills who have been in close proximity to me, and notice for the record, I did not say Karen Hoodish. But, uh, okay. you, you know, turn, turnabout's fair play. And if, if bad people want to record us, uh, everything we do, you know, through technology, the CIA, the FBI, Big Brother, and the Wizard of Oz, oh. well, every one of those shills should fully anticipate that if they're kissing the ass of somebody, that is trans... Uh -huh. Yeah, in the, in the mind of the somebody who says, why in the world should these lower level shills be kissing my ass? Well... It would be nice for them to think that every comment expressed between us, it, like with George Webb, uh, he was really sucking up. 
and he wanted to meet me. Uh, uh -huh. And then he claimed he didn't see the turnoff for Plum City, which is impossible. Uh, yep. But anyway, so I went Pretty over. Much. I went to another town and met with him there, uh, and I found him not to be uh, accountable. In other words, if he tells me something point blank <clears throat> and it doesn't happen, to me that's accountable. And that's how I mean it. But in fact, I, I get tired of listening to myself speak. I'm going to show you something, then I'm going to turn it over to you. But uh, what I'm uh -huh. showing, I'm showing not only you, but everybody else this plaque. And this plaque was, uh, it was contracted for by an ally of Able Danger in the Children's Crusade. Yeah. In fact, it gives me an idea. Uh, the man's name is Ryan Vale, V-A-L-E. And he has a, oh. uh, he has a business in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. And uh, he follows Able Danger and for whatever reason, he likes us. I'm going to hold up a belt buckle. This belt buckle says yeah. USMC Colonel J. Sabow, and it's got Sabow's face. And is that coming through yeah. so you can see it, Will Gobsmack? It's coming through loud and clear, yeah. And okay. a beautiful plaque as well. It's very well done. Yeah, let me uh, just show you how this plaque it's supposed to work. <laughs> it's it's not helping me, but I know I'll do it this way. There's the belt buckle, and there's a picture of Colonel Sabo, and it says U.S. Oh, Marine. Oh. Yeah, uh, maybe I'll maybe I'll bring one of these to Clan Gotland. Um, I like to pack light, but you know I also like to I like to um, expose people like uh, John McCain, uh, G. H. W. Bush, Christine Marcy. And I do it in a way that doesn't get me killed because early on, these people who I was accusing of treason, and notice for the record, I didn't say anything at all about former Speaker of the House, Paul Ryan, former Governor Scott Walker of Wisconsin, and soon to be former Senator, let me think of his name, Ron Johnson from Wisconsin, and former Congressman, oh. uh, let me think of his name, Ron Kind. Uh, these people are guilty of misprision of treason and misprision of felony pedophilia. And I said they're guilty. I did not say they've been adjudicated because our court system in the United States of America from top to bottom uh, has been run by interest in England and the Jesuit branch of the Vatican. However, having said that, on a brighter note, uh, I'm alive and those other guys are either dead or on uh, death's doorstep. On the plaque, it says Matthew 2540. Uh, hopefully, Telstar can, or, or James can, can put 2540. And it says in Matthew 2540, and roughly it says this. If you've done it to the least of these brothers of mine, you've done it to me. And the way that applies is George H.W. Bush and Jeb Bush had uh, James Sabow assassinated. They did it to him. Well, they just effectively yeah. did it to me. Because whether anybody wants to believe yeah. this, the Marine Corps is more than a military service. It's a brotherhood. And uh, you hurt my brother, oh, yeah. we're all, we're all going to come over and ruin your day. Uh, but anyway, back to the plaque. Up in this corner, it says Colonel James Sabow, 1939 to 1991. Uh, he died before his 52nd birthday. And my uh, Annapolis classmate, Chick Burlingame, died on his 52nd birthday uh, when the people that I just named, Christine Marcy, G.H.W. Bush, uh, John McCain, when they caused 9-11 to occur and they killed Chick Burlingame. He wasn't a Marine, but he's close enough. And so he's going to be protected too. Cause of death. This great big thing right here says cause of death. Trauma to the head caused by the short-range discharging of a shotgun by a second party. Okay, well, the second party could have been George S. Griggs. Uh, many of you people know K. Griggs is a whistleblower about the homosexual, pedophile, and alcoholic contingent of the Marine Corps, which includes uh, at least one gay four-star general.
Notice for the record, I didn't say the name Al Gray, who's still alive, and he's probably having an involuntary urinary discharge right now. Uh, at the bottom of this, it says, I tell you the truth, when you did it to one of the least of these brothers and sisters, you were doing it to me. Oh, you want to do it to me? Well, good. There's probably 17,000 people that are going to gather their friends, and we're going to do it to you. Over to you, Gobsmack. It's a true story. Where we go one, we go all. And that is quite a good adage, really, because in God's army, we are all one. And we've got a sense of unity that is eternal. And it's an eternal hope, and, it's an, and, and it is the truth, plain and simple. So you're right in what you say, because there have been a whole host of good men who have been taken away far, beyond, far, far sooner than they should have been. And their only crime being is that they tried to do the right thing. They tried to do the right thing under God in this lifetime. And they were stopped in their tracks by the cabal that have been in place, that have created this con that has been running this world for the last 2,300 years, that was perfected in 1302 under Unum Sanctum, when the Pope decreed that he owned every living thing on this planet, that he was the vice regent of the Creator, and that he alone had the right and the authority to delegate every single bird, every single bee, every single grain of oats, every fish, every fowl, and that he could delegate it. He could sign pieces of paper that said a person couldn't go and fish on a river, couldn't go and climb a mountain, couldn't go and swim in a lake, and that is a complete and absolute fabrication and fiction. Um, the education that's there, it's all on the internet. Like I said before, and I keep reiterating this, this is not a conspiracy channel. Everything that we talk about here can be gone and researched and looked at on the internet because it is there, especially now that it's there. Whereas before, in the olden days before the internet, the only way you could access this information is if you joined secret society, you were given the illumination, you were told about the secret signals and the secret numbers that are hidden in plain sight. I mean, everybody's going on about this number 17 because it refers to a certain letter in the alphabet. There's gematria all over the place. But you see, the thing about numbers is because numbers can be made and adapted to suit pretty much any purpose. Ask any statistician, I can't even say that word, statistic, never mind, abandon that word, but any accountant. And so that's the thing with the numbers. But again, like I said, I can't remember what I was saying, but the fact of the matter is that through an unum sanctum, attorney regis and convocation, that's the three crowns that the Pope wears on his hat. Now, the Pope today, currently, he's not really the Pope, and I think he's going to be gone by the end of next month anyway. The real Pope is still the one that was there, his predecessor, that can't come out of the Vatican for a whole bunch of reasons. He's locked in the Vatican. They still call him the Pope, and he is still actually acting as the Pope, whereas Jose Maria Bergoglio, the Italian fake, he's the Barry Obama of the Vatican at this particular moment in time. And they gave the authority to the Crown, the three crowns, one in London, one in Spain, and one in Washington. And so this is what's been running us since, well, since, since 1776, 1783, basically, because there was some good men who began with the project, the great experiment, as America was called. Now, the United States of America, even that word in itself is a misnomer. The United States, the word of means take away. So it's just the United States, the fake, fictitious corporation that is enclosed, encapsulated in the 10 square miles of Washington, District of Columbia, as picked upon by George Washington, which used to be called Rome on the Tiber. Now, when the War of Independence, which again was a fiction, was won or lost, as the case may be, it doesn't matter because it's still owned by the Crown anyway. And that is a situation that we are currently trying to fix as it were. Donald Trump doing a fantastic job. Donald Trump is knocking down every domino in sight. I see people saying, oh, but he's just replacing bad with bad because he's taken people from the GHW Bush uh, faction of government back in the old days, the old guard, as I call them, and he's putting them back in positions of power and authority. But basically, he's just putting them there so that they can shine a light on themselves and they can fail miserably because they were corrupt from the beginning and they haven't changed their coats because they can't. 
And the thing about well, the good thing about Able Danger is even this week, the new congressmen that are coming in, we're getting information coming thick and fast in regards to every single one of them. These dominoes are getting knocked down before they even get put into place, realistically speaking. For example, this man Beto O'Rourke, I saw information this week allegedly. This guy, he's been involved in housebreakings, he's been involved in frauds, he's been involved in a whole bunch of scams. And I thought that one of the prerequisites of running for any part, any office in America was that none of these things applied. And so the whole the whole schism is falling apart around their ears and their eyes. And the only man that's holding the whole situation, technically the last greatest hope on the planet is Donald John Trump and the brute force of the men that are standing behind them, the good men of the military, who have been and seen and realised the way that these men in suits, the Council of Foreign Relations, the whole, uh, there's a whole bunch of different factions that need to be dealt with, and it is being done behind the lines, behind the scenes. You will not hear about this in the mainstream media. Why? Because the six men that run the mainstream media, they're part of the cabal. They've been putting out the programming, the Tavistock Institute programming, since the Tavistock Institute was created to go and get people to go and throw themselves face down in muddy fields in France to die so that one of the progeny of Victoria's womb could argue with another one of the progeny of Victoria's womb and squabble and see how many people they could kill battling each other and taking bets on the end result and the gains and the losses while people were buying the guns and the tanks and the bullets and other people were making the ambulances and the bandages. That has to stop. It is stopping and God is with us. And when God is with you, you can't fail. Call on the Creator, rely upon the Creator. He replies and he does not let us fall. Our victory is guaranteed and it's assured. It's written in a number of books across the face of the planet. And so that's where we find ourselves today. The whole thing, well, I don't want to jump ahead of myself because the whole of this, the, the, the Davos thing, the reset, and the whole of the political arena that's going on round about us at this moment is a different matter in time. However, I have wandered completely off the subject entirely. Going back to the James Sabo, was that, that was the El Toro base, that was, was that, the, uh, yeah, of course, yeah, sorry, 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 Phil, I, I should make notes about this, but uh, there was something that came, into, there was something in connection I saw this week, another name that came into the Barry Seal story, but it was El Toro, was it El Toro that uh, James Sabo's brother worked at, James Sabo worked at? Yes, uh, it's in the Los Angeles area. It, the the base, what's left of it, is still there. It's a toxic site. Uh, but when I was yeah. there with James Sabo in uh, 1973 and 1974, uh, he came back later uh, in the 1990s. He was the second senior man on base. But when I was with him, uh, it was a wonderful assignment. Uh, people that were Marine... Well, the, all the Marines that had some job description, like mine, was flying. Do you remember in the, the movie uh, Top Gun, the bald-headed guy I in do. the Combat Information Center said, basically, you guys screw this up and you'll be flying rubber, rubber dog shit out of Hong Kong. <laughs> well, <laughs> I actually, I started my career <laughs> flying rubber dog shit out of El Toro, uh, and yet... And I attribute this all to God, let there be no question. When yes. I had my heart crushed and I got kicked out of a fighter squadron because I told the commanding officer to stick it where the sun doesn't shine, which I thought he would have admired my backbone. Uh, in fact, that very word was in his response to me. He said, well, Lieutenant yeah. McConnell, I really admire your backbone, but you, your backbone and your ass will be flying C-130s out of El Toro next week. And he was right. He told me that on Monday yeah. and by Thursday of the same week. And if anybody wants to know when, thank you, Cutter, for putting that up. There's that little bald-headed guy that says you're going to be flying rubber dog shit. Well, I've been there and I, I got kicked out of the fighters and I got sent to transports and I thought my life was lost. And this is like a lot of people. In fact, I have a really odd attraction to Wales because even compared to the rest of the UK and Ireland, Wales had a lot of very discouraged and despondent young adults throughout the 70s, 80s, 90s, hopefully not today, but 
there's no greater example of the despondency of the Welsh young people than the band called Badfinger. Pete Ham, Pete Ham, H A M, he hung himself in '75. The other guitar player who played bass and sang uh, with Pete was Tommy Evans, and he couldn't rise above the discouragement. And so I know you're Scottish, and I know that you're parked in England, but don't you think that you and I and the people that go to the Children's Crusade initial meeting can do a lot to bring an encouraging wow. flicker of hope to the young people of Wales? I believe that we're not. We're, we're we're currently doing that field. We are currently doing that because the, the word has gone out, and between ourselves, Gordon Bowden, Alan Dransfield, Mark Steele, and another couple of names that you know that are on a list that possibly will attend, and another few that will maybe make it through the individual days, we are going to put into place the beginning of, let's just say that we're going to, we're, we're the dam busters, we're going to put a hole in the bottom of the dam that is not going to be able to be repaired. We're going to bring down and we are going to make changes that no government that is currently in operation can stop because I know for a fact the government in this country is a fake. It has been since the lawful rebellion was instigated in the year 2001, where the Queen ceased to be the Queen. The government has been illegal as well as unlawful since that time because the Article 61 of Magna Carta, that document still stands today. If you go back into your history books, Churchill has mentioned it, Jack Straw has mentioned it, it's still there and nobody, but nobody knows about it, but more and more people are becoming aware about it now. And we're going to make ripples that are going to turn into a tsunami and it's going to be a tsunami of truth because the average the average Joe, shall we call them, the average person out there, which is a dead corporation, a fiction and God says have nothing to do with persons, but people are starting to realise that they are in a situation that they do not have to be in with regards to mortgages, with regards to tax, with the fact that they are being oppressed. People are being oppressed because of this fiat currency, which is controlled by a handful of men who print money and then charge us interest for printing that money when all we have to do, and it's as plain and simple as this, is to end the Fed, bring back the greenback dollar, or in the case of the United Kingdom, to bring back the Bradbury pound. That is for the government to print interest-free money so that we, the people, can use it to do what we started. And then we, we created government simply to go out and build roads and bridges and wharves to make the infrastructure for our society to work. And that's all government really needs to be doing. And what's happened? We've got a whole bunch of corrupt bastards going round, creating wars, creating division, creating bribes, creating disharmony the planet over so that they can make more gain while the poor average Joe is suffering even more than he's ever suffered before. A hundred thousand people dying because their entitlements from the SDQV Act that these guys up at the top, they're accounting us. Every piece of paper that we sign means money to somebody somewhere, but not to us. It just puts us into debt because we are debt slaves under the Dead Slave Act. And so these guys, the average the average wage on this planet just now is $5.50 an hour. Okay? And then you get people like Nancy Pelosi, who's worth $196 million. Where the hell does she get that money from on an average salary of 174000 a year? It's the same with what you call her, Diane Feinstein. These guys have amassed personal fortunes. How did they do it? Oh, I don't think that they invested in the right stocks and shares, but they probably did. But then they're the ones that knocked the companies down and blew them back up again. Gordon Bowden is the man that's got all this information. And this goes right the way back to the fake monarchy that's in this country, Rio Tinto. That goes right the way back up to royalty. And that's why none of the mainstream media, will they, they won't touch this. I was tweeting... Well, The Economist magazine, who once gave me a televised interview back in the day when they asked me what my thoughts on the internet was, and this was back when the internet was only a matter of months old. The Wall Street Journal, I keep telling them, hey guys, go and check this, go and check this, but no, 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 they won't touch it, they won't look at it. Why? Because they don't want we the sheeple to wake up and smell the bloody coffee and realise that we don't have to have this system in place. All we have to do is say no. All we have to do realistically is to go and inhabit our House of Commons in the United Kingdom, that is. We need 1,300 people working on minimum wage, living in a housing estate in Hackney, getting bussed backwards and forwards on a 24-hour 
24 hour day if necessary in order to weed out all the corrupt, to weed out all the poison that has been put into place since, well, uh, it's difficult to say to put up again. Well, I would say that it was the first day of the Great Fire in 1666. We need to press the reset button back to then for this country. In the case of America, it would have been the 1871 Organic Act, and then there was a whole host of other machinations put into place that culminated in the Maternity Act in 1921. That's when they made it mandatory that everybody in America had to have this thing called the birth certificate or birth certificate, which made everybody slaves. Then a few years later, on the 1st of May, May Day, big, huge pagan holiday festival day, they created the fiction that is today the United States dollar, where they pledged the people, they pledged the people a stock, security, chattel goods for the repayment of debt to this Federal Reserve, the creation that was made on Jekyll Island, as we know, in 1913. And a whole bunch of the men that were opposed to it, what happened to them? They went swimming with the Titanic. And so, again, that, go and look into that, the Titanic wasn't the Titanic, it was the Olympic. There was an insurance job, an insurance scam, and they managed to wipe out their opposition in one fell swoop. And so, yeah, forgive me, Jeff, I'm, I'm, I'm rambling off again on a completely different, uh, a completely different track, but yeah. Uh, going back to the, the going back to the El Toro, that that was responsible for one. It was one of the largest drug smuggling operations in, in the in the United States military history, I believe. Was Barry Seal actually flying into that? And this is one of the reasons I love you, Phil, is because you know it's well known that you used to fly at two and a half thousand miles an hour upside down in your F four, doing loop de loops and blowing things out of the sky at seventy miles an hour, even though you weren't supposed to. And then they punished you by putting you into a Hercules C one thirty, which is what I got top speed of about one hundred and fifty miles an hour or something like that, is it? Yeah, Mike well, Humphrey. yeah, I got my ego crushed because a lot of us young men and women as we're growing up we find some reason to develop an ego which oftentimes doesn't work out very well and and uh, i actually had my in fact if you've ever read any of the crappy books i write i mean the crappy ones not the ones that i've written the last four books are probably okay but the first 13 or 14 was utter i think you call it rubbish over there uh, <laughs> no, no. But yeah, but what I was doing for the thir first 13 or 14 books, I was putting it's, out listen, facts. Yeah, we, uh, and, but I was I was putting yeah. out facts buried by pan, uh, pastel IOCs, uh, MI, which stands for something index. You know, I was putting out some stuff that, that was outrageously heterosexual, and I was doing that for a very good reason because I knew my sister and uh, a wide majority of the miscreants in government, I knew once they started reading about heterosexual sex, they'd stop reading. And by the time, by the time I basically had most of these people uh, one step away from the gallows, then suddenly they went back and reread this stuff. Well, today's radio show ad, it has something in it about Pelosi that was written on August 30th of 2013. Now, I think Cutter, Telstar, and there's one more person, uh, Cutter, Telstar, I know who it is. It's uh, the Telford Russian. I think that any of those three could quickly find whatever it was that I wrote about in current, uh, and I think the issue involved Pelosi. But see, everybody understands now that Pelosi is probably the most guilty. And that's maybe not the most guilty, but the, she's so sloppy. I mean, she was so easy to uh, discredit that David Hawkins and I were doing that in print six years ago. Now, I don't know the law like yeah. you know the law, but I think in equity, if somebody wants to say that Field McConnell is libeling them, then they need to do that in a timely manner and they need to prove what it is I've said is untrue. Yeah. Uh, well, Pelosi certainly can't do that. I mean, in the one radio show ad today, I, I make a comment about Pelosi and then I put in something from August 30th of 2013, which leads most people whose brain is still functioning, 
which would rule out most of our government people, and it would rule out the uh, ICO, uh, Information and Communications, whatever, office. Uh, you know, these people, they, they live in another world, and between methane and lack of oxygen, I wonder where they have their heads stuck. Um, because they've thought they've been getting away with this for a long, long time, and they've never been getting away with it. Everything that G.H.W. Bush ever did, everything uh, that Robert Swan Mueller III inherited from his Nazi father. Uh, yes. Yeah, see, I'm, I, I don't make stuff up because I don't have to make stuff up. All I exactly. do is, and Denise is right behind me, she can either say no, 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 or yes, 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 or she can ignore this. But I go down to my computer in the morning with a cup of coffee and I think, oh, this is gonna be an easy day. And then my computer comes online and my emails are stacked up and I thought, well, so much for the easy day. But gobsmack, I'm telling you the truth. Uh, at some point, your life and my life and Denise's life, and let me just go through and see who else may be, well, we're all gonna be affected because everyone at Able Danger or <clears throat> the Children's Crusade, everyone that aligns with us intellectually, okay. uh, they're all, who knows who's bringing the last, who knows who's bringing the last brick to the camel before the camel dies. Uh, notice for the record, I didn't say anything at all about camel toe, uh, but I could because I've got a <laughs> mind that skips around. It drives, it drives bad people nuts and, it, and good people like uh, Mark Miley and uh, Michael Flynn and President Trump, you know, they sit there and they said, boy, am I glad that Able Danger is doing this because I would be discredited if I said these things. But all I'm saying is the truth, but I just, I couch it differently. Uh, I didn't say casting couch, that's uh, Hollywood. But no, I, what I say, oh. I try to say things in a way that it requires the listener to do a little bit of thinking. And right now I wanna save myself about three hours a day of emails. If anybody emails me, and during this show early on, in fact, just to keep myself honest, I'll tell you the phone number of somebody that called up and interrupted uh, during the early portion. Now, a lot of people are getting nervous. Uh, let me, yeah. Oh, okay, I gotta cover up the camera. Uh, I can understand No, that. no, I got, I'm covering the camera up because the, uh, in fact, Gobsmack, can you sort of take over for a split second? Oh, by the way, to encourage you? Yeah, you, sure. You remember uh -huh. I said I said you and I and a bunch of other people in, in this chat room right now are going to have some pretty uh, tangible improvements in lifestyle fairly soon? Uh, I believe you did, yes, correct. Okay, that's what I want to talk to you about after the show. But let me go greet these people. One of them came from California. Certainly. One of them came from Indonesia. Oh. So you you talk about the future. Uh, in fact, I'll give you a subject that you can uh, hypothesize about. Uh, go on then. Yeah, if you were invited to come to the Texas Veterans Ranch and work full time as an educator in a very, just as you are right now, dressed as you are, thinking as you are, and it would be an open ticket, you know, just if you feel like uh, giving a lecture for an hour on Tuesday and then a two hour lecture on Friday and taking the rest of the week off, I already know the dollar figure that someone would pay you. I'll be right back, okay? I'll, I won't be gone more than three minutes. No problem, Chief. Well, you take your time and say hi to the people from Indonesia and California. It's a long way for them to travel, so I'm sure take your time. And, but I'd like to go back instantly to a question that was given to me by uh, one of our Able Danger agents in the campfire chat room, Hanging Chad. And this applies to everybody out there, everybody that's got a credit card. If you go and look at your credit card, you'll find that your name is in all capital letters, okay? Now, that all capital letters, that's not English. You've been told that it's English. You've been conned into believing that it's English, but it's not. It's not even there. It's called Glossa. It's called American Sign Language, okay? It's in the Oxford Styles Manual. And these cons have been perpetrated on the masses, but hanging chat is as simple as this. 
when you realise that you're no longer dead beyond the high seas of commerce under the Unum Sanctum, the Sestui QV Convocation and Attorney Regis, you make your affidavit notice, you send it to the Vatican, you send it to your Attorney General, you can send it to your state, you send it to the finance facilities because any document that you have signed in ignorance, in fraud, because they did not give you full disclosure. Fraud makes every contract void ab initio. So when you get your credit card and these people are screwing you to the limit and they're forcing you to repay twice, there is no thing as money. Money is a fiction. We've been in debt. The world is in debt to the tune of 184 something something. is about 15 digits long. But who are we in debt to? Jupiter, Mars, and for what? So when you make it clear that you have been a victim of fraud and that there is no such thing as money, you can then just sign a promise to pay note because that's all money is, it's a promise to pay at a later date. That's all it is. And so you just sign them and say, hey, you go, here's my signature because your signature is priceless really because we've got access to the Holy State. We are beneficiaries of the entire planet Earth under God. We, the people, under God, created governments, we created kings, we created queens, we created presidents, emperors, and so on and so forth. They've got no divine right to rule over nothing. They were given that divine right by the Pope under the scheme called Unum Sanctum, the first private trust. So you write to these fictitious authorities that claim money off you and just say, no, dude, I've been involved in a fraud. I'm trying to figure out this fraud. Here you go. Here's my signature. We'll sort it out later. Meantime, take my name off your books. Otherwise, I'm going to start charging you a fee for having my name in your fee, in your books because they are third-party interlopers who have got no right to be subrogating is the legal term. They are subrogating your name. They are making money out of processing your dead name, which you claim to. Because when you stand up and say, yes, I'm John Smith, you are then assuming liability for that fake dead fiction that is lost beyond the high seas of commerce. So with your credit card people, you just write to them and say, listen, this has been a fraud. Here's a piece of paper that promises to pay at some point in time in the future. It's as good as money under the 1882 Bills of Exchange Act. Now, I'm trying to sum this up in one easy sentence, but the fact of the matter is, is that all this information is out there. I didn't make any of this up. This is not a conspiracy theory. I'm not just grasping words out of the air. It's all out there for anybody to go and study. I had a really interesting conversation last night on Twitter with a guy. First of all, it started off that he didn't believe in God. He didn't believe in the Bible. He didn't believe in heaven nor hell. And so, God willing, he's listening tonight, and you know who you are. Please go and check what I told you to go and check. Read it for yourself, and use your own mind. Make up your own decision with your own inspiration, and then see if there's any glimmer of truth in what I was saying, because you need to sack the devil. And the devil is the one that is using these corporations, using us as slaves, chattels, their goods, in order for us to finance their lucrative lifestyles. They've all got big mansions and private jets. They've all got luxury lifestyles while we are suffering and we get ticketed for parking our car on probably a road our grandparents built and we're getting fined for putting our bins out on the wrong day. We're getting penalised 4,000 taxes and more happening daily. They're even going to start taxing water now, I believe, down in Texas was a proposition that was put forward recently. And so when you see that you're party to the fraud, you remove yourself from the fraud, you then become honourable with clean hands, which is a lawful term. Legalese is claptrap. Acts and statutes are voluntary. You do not have to comply to them. Your dead person does, but once you claim back your living, breathing soul from the liars, then you do not have to comply with any of these. The only laws that truly matter on this life are the ones in Deuteronomy. When Donald Trump took, this, took his oath, what did he put his hand upon? The top of the King James Bible. The Queen, the same. Everybody that's in this BAR system, the British Accredited Registry System, they promised to uphold the truths contained within that book. Now, what happened was in the 18th century, they discovered that they made a mistake by telling people through the King James 1611 Cambridge Edition Bible how to defeat that and how to rise from the dead to get yourself back because the answer is contained in that book, okay? Every answer you'll ever need is contained in that book when it comes to dealing with law and it comes to dealing with legalese because that is the book that they put their hands on. They take an oath to uphold that and the precepts contained therein. And so with that book, 
armed with the 1882 Bills of Exchange Act, armed with the Magna Carta in the case of the British or the, Constitu the original Constitution in the case of America. But even that, they can be argued for and against. But long story short is you need to know your status, you need to know your standing on this plan, plane or planet or realm called Earth. And when you realise that God gave us, you, man, woman, the best autonomy of all, above governments, above corporations, above everything, then you know your true standing, your true value, your signature is priceless because only you can create that signature. And through your Christian names, you become alive again through Christ in the book called the King James Bible. The 1611 Cambridge edition, because in later Bibles, you go to a courtroom today, you pick up most Bibles today, you look in the Bible, you will see the word Lord and God, you'll written, it's all capitalized. That's glossa. That's not on the page. This is what part of the con that they've got people into believing. So when you put your hand on that book and you promise and swear to what Paul to tell the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, you're actually creating a blasphemy before your creator because God's name is not in that book. It's the same with the word Jew. The word Jew didn't exist in any form until the 15th century as we know it today. It wasn't put into the Bible until the middle of the 18th century. And these things have all been put there to cheat us, to open escape the truth and to make us fight each other, hate each other, kill each other at their whim when they decide who's going to have a war where, who's going to sell the planes, who's going to sell the ships, who's going to sell the guns, the bullets. You get the idea, guys. And when you become awake and aware to that, and so you're having no party to it, it weakens their authority. It, this is why I said before, and I've said it repeatedly, what we need is people to wake up, reclaim their soul back from the Vatican, and then put their soul and their honour and their truth behind an individual who can go out there and change the way that this scheme is running. And at this moment in time, that individual is a dude called Donald John Trump, whose mother comes from Scotland, whose father comes from Germany, and he is the man currently running the biggest ship of all, which is the Corporation of the United States and the United States of America. Because Anna von Wrights will be able to give you all the information you need about that, especially for the American side of things, because she has got every detail down to the fine tee. Okay, we need to get her back on the show. She was on the show some time back and it's been a long time. Another chap that the Americans I recommend you listen to is a man called Carl Lentz. That's Lima Echo November Tango Zulu. Carl Lentz. Awesome man. Keep it simple. Know who you are. Know your own power. Know by the power of your hand right on a piece of paper you can create using that pen and paper, which is far mightier than the sword. And there's a whole bunch of chicanery and ties in to do with the paper too, the colour of the paper, the colour of the text on the paper, the size of the paper. If you look at your A4 paper, it's called fool's cap. Fool, because only fools and dead people use it. And when you write black on white, if you go and check your local Masonic hall or look at your Masonic regalia, you'll see that everything's black and white. Again, that all ties in. Why? Because it's all part of the line, it's all part of the fiction. These people are told that when they get to certain levels of their secret societies, whether they're Jesuits, Franciscans, ad infinitum, they know about this at certain levels. Your average attorney, your lawyer, he doesn't have a clue about this because it's on a need to know basis. Your lawyer is just a neocromancer because he's talking for the dead. And if you go into court and agree to be the dead paper, you agree to be the dead name because they own the name. You don't own your own name, they do. And if you agree to be that name, then you become liable for anything attached to that name. And if you fail to pay the debts for that name, they can put you in a place called a jail or a prison or a goal. You are bonded because you're a bonded slave via that paper because your birth certificate is bonded paper. It's priceless. It's your ticket to the warehouse. And the warehouse is everything contained in planet Earth. Um, I hope I'm making this clear. I hope that I'm not talking too fast. And I hope that you do go and check exactly what I'm trying to tell you here because the minute you do wake up and smell the coffee, throw that with the most powerful force of all and that is prayer to the that is prayer to the creator. It doesn't matter what you call him, whether it's Yahweh, Jehovah, Allah, whatever. Pick your name, but there is a force that has given us this life, has created this planet for our benefit to enjoy for one lifetime. And we should be able to do that without having to be taxed, without having to be restricted as to where we go.
wh when, where, who, and why has got no authority over you. The only authority that is over you is the Creator's authority over you, and that's the only one that you submit to. You don't understand. Even the words that we use, they're cons, they're put into us, they're programmed into us from an early age so that we acquiesce and we submit to their words. I mean, take for the Bible. If you look in the King James Bible, the word person, everybody says, oh, I'm a good person, I'm a great citizen. Citizen is a slave. That's what the word citizen means. Go and look in a law dictionary, Black's Law Dictionary, Blackstones, the ones that they use in their courts, which aren't proper courts, as Phil said earlier, they're administration centres, they're administration centres processing dead people. But if you go and look in that book, in Romans 2.11, for there is no respect of persons with God. Acts 10.34, then Peter opened his mouth and said, of a truth I perceive that God is no respecter of persons. Psalms 26.4, I have not sat with vain persons, neither will I go with disassemblers. And disassemblers are the people that take apart the truth, they cloud you, they lie to you, and then they cheat you. Job 13.10, he will surely prove you if you do secretly accept persons. There are umpteen, there's about 20 or 30 times in the Bible where God says have nothing to do with persons. The truth is out there, it's hidden in plain sight. Hidden in plain sight, it has to be. This is why they do their rituals in plain sight. 9-11, beautiful ritual that was. Hey, let's sell these two asbestos ridden towers that need to be taken apart. Had they had to take them apart manually, it would have cost them trillion upon trillion of dollar to take it down one floor at a time. With the amount of deadly asbestos that was contained in these buildings, it would have cost them a fortune before they could knock them to the ground and rebuild something else. So what did they do? Hey, they sold it to a guy called Larry Silverstein who got insurance on it for a terrorist attack. A couple of weeks later, boom, what happened to the asbestos? The inhabitants of New York City ingested it into their lungs. Problem solved. Same with fluoride. It's in your water, it's in your toothpaste, it's in the foods. It's toxic waste, it's industrial waste. How do we get rid of it? Ah, we'll get the people to eat it. They're stupid, they're dead, they don't know what they're doing. That's what's been going on, guys. And now with this 5G that we're talking about, poof, that's even more. But you see, they're winning hands down anyway, because your dead body is worth more than your living one. And think of all the medicine, which is fluoride based, every pill that you pop that's solid, 75% fluoride, 3% cure, and the rest is more damage. Wow. I, it's repeat business. And so when they make us ill, when they give us all these cancers and all these lesions and all these ailments that we get, what are we going to have to do? We're going to have to go and give them more of our fiat currency in order for them to try and fix us. But they know that we're not going to be fixed because in the end, we're going to die. And when we do die, there's a fortune, there's a look at the industry and body parts as well. This, is, this scam is, is, is the biggest scam on the earth. And we, the people, have to sit down and say no to this scam. And through the communications methods that we've got just now, Twitter, YouTube, Livestream, Vimeo, take your pick. There are millions of various channels out there. And this is why the Children's Crusade, we are wanting to teach the Generation Z. We're Generation X, anybody that's born around 40, well, 40, 50 years of age, after the baby, the war baby, boomers and all, all of that kind of nonsense. Because it's our future generations that we are doing this for, because we realise that this con is in place. We realise that they've been lying to us. We have to educate our progeny so that they can reclaim and they can make this place the paradise it was meant to be. There's no reason for anybody in Earth to be unemployed. Everybody could have, about, have a lucrative existence painting the grass green on the side of the freeways. You know what I'm saying? There is no lack of industry. There's no lack of water. There's no lack of food. There's no such thing as overpopulation. Everybody feels said that his apartment down the stairs is 1,700 square feet. That's massive. That's, that's, that's you know, that in, well, in America, most houses are kind of like a lot bigger than they are in Europe. But every person or every, so I see even I'm, I, even today, I still use that word by accident when I don't mean to. Why? Because I was programmed into it from the time I went to a place called school. But every individual on this planet could have 2,000 square feet of Alaska and live comfortably. That's the lie that they talk about, this overpopulation. They just want to put Agenda 21 and 31 into place so that they can have the place for them and their inbred progeny. 
the ones that started this lie and the ones that continue this lie through the 13 families, the Illuminati bloodlines. You've, you've all seen the conspiracy sites regarding it. These people are real. The story is real. They're in hiding. They change their names, even by one letter sometimes, as Gordon Bowden pointed out, in the case of their paper trails, because they are bound to do and they are bound to act in the way that the scam dictates. It's like the devil is bound by the book called the Bible. Plain and simple as that. And when you know your enemy and you know how to defeat your enemy, then you will win. And the Bible, King James 1611 Cambridge edition, I can't keep reiterating that enough because the later Bibles, they change the meaning of the words. They change the words around so that it's actually the opposite of what you think it says. And that is the case for most legalese documents you'll ever get today. This is why you read all the small print on the back of every contract. It's, it's, it's ripping you off. You sign a mortgage, you're giving your power of attorney back to whoever it is that owns that mortgage. You're saying, here you go, I'm signing this piece of paper, I'm going to pay you forever until the day I die for this. But meanwhile, you can be the boss of it, you can have it, I'm giving it over to you. So that if I fail to make the payments, you can come along and kick me out of it. And that's what they've been doing. And this is why people suffer when there shouldn't be any suffering. There should be none of that because we are entitled to everything on this planet. Hundreds and hundreds of people tonight out in the cold, freezing, starving. Vets, 22 a day, I believe, are dying. Why? They went, they gave up their all, literally, to fight for a country that they believed in. They've come back and what's happened to them? They've been given, they've been, they've had the little thing, the sparse that they've had has been taken away from them. And it's the same with everybody. Even today in the city of London, you get couples, married couples, who are both, both, both working top end jobs, but London's an expensive place. They're still going to food banks. Why are they going to food banks? Because their fiat currency pay doesn't meet the criteria where they can have a comfortable lifestyle. And they don't want people having a comfortable lifestyle because that's only for them to enjoy. They're the ones that go around in luxury. Whereas we suffer. And I, I went back to, oh, you're back, Chief. Thank you. Hey, let so, me, uh, again, let like me... I said, in the Bible. Yeah, go on. No, no. I, listen, I don't want to interrupt you, but I just talked to two ladies for maybe uh -huh. five to seven minutes. And uh, I got some information that's going to be a blessing to you. Uh, when? Soon. How soon? I don't know. I'll, I'll talk to you at the end of the show. But, uh, uh -huh. yeah, when you talk about the uh, doctrine of prosperity, we're right on the cusp of that. We honestly are. Now, yeah. the history... I believe so myself. Yes, and... and uh, you know, this uh, Texas Veterans Ranch, uh, I truly believe it's going to happen. And I truly believe that when it happens, as of right now, the four full-time employees that I envision would be Denise and I, because we'd be the sort of the owners or the, um, you know, the, the people that live there by the grace of God, not mm -hmm. by industry of ourselves. But uh, yeah, then uh, I... We'd love to have you there full time because not just because you're from the United Kingdom, but because you're knowledgeable, uh, you can speak very well, and there's there's uh, evident humility because you know that you just like I know uh, that mm -hmm. I didn't put me in my position, and you didn't create you. That God has created us both, and before before time began, he knew what I could do for humanity because he engineered me to do it. Well, he knows what you can yeah. do for humanity because he engineered you. And I'd say most of the people in the chat room would agree that you and I are not cut out of a normal bolt of fabric, but we're cut out of a fabric that will not wither, will not run, will not uh, become weak, and yet, it'll do what its purpose to do is. And, and uh, I'm really moved to be part of what I can see clearly is going on. And uh, as God is trying to bless us, save us, and allow us to live as he created the world for us to live in, where everything's provided, mm -hmm. everything's free, and all we have to do is love our brothers uh, and sisters 
just as God has asked us to love ourselves. And I don't know about you, Gapsmack, but I have a little hard time loving myself unless I stay as close as I possibly can to that right hand of God who's trying to guide me every step. Now, here's a really, really not, it's a humble way to prove that what I just said is accurate. Do you think it's possible that I could have caused myself to be the college classmate of Chick Burlingame who was no. the captain of 77. Do you think I could have caused my sister to take my intellectual property about droning and then participate in the engineering of 9-11? Or do you think I could have caused myself, who got kicked out of a fighter squadron and had to fly rubber dog shit, do you think I could cause myself to fly F-16s and appear to have obstructed 9-11 by imputing a 41 minute delay to appear to have it solve 9-11, uh, to appear to have solved MH370 on the day it happened. And the answer is, don't always believe everything that appears in front of you. You know, test it, consider it, think about it. And if yeah. you, but uh, you're a very special per a person who's gonna have a very, very pleasant, uh, I think what you'll be doing from fairly soon until God calls you home is I think you'll be sharing the truth with people in a non-confrontational, non-holier-than-thou, very clear-to-understand message. And uh, yeah, NWA just, uh, and I'm humbled by what's going on, not just here in this conversation, but over there in the other room. Uh, yeah, God has been controlling me since he created me. Uh, I was resisting that for 44 years. Uh, on the Feb February 1st of 1994, Jesus knocked on my door and said, I'm not sure if I'll be back your way so you can continue trying to run your own world or you can follow me. And yeah, yeah that's, it's fairly uh, humbling to realize uh, how much he loved me back then. Uh, but I'll tell you what, when he knocked on my door, I answered it. And yeah. I, I thank him every single day that he gave me one last chance. And, uh, here, oh, I never finished who the four people at the ranch would be. Uh, Denise and I would be the, the host couple, if you will. Uh, you'd be uh, a full-time educator if you want. And you can, when that opportunity comes, you could certainly have a schedule that fits into whatever you want to be doing. You know, there, it's not like a lot of these jobs, you have to do exactly what they say and you have to show up at the same time, check out at the same time and, and, uh, and you have to do the uh, thinking of the CEO. Well, I've, I can't, there I am, I'm almost reverting to my former self. Uh, like I told the commanding <laughs> officer of the fire squad, I basically told him to foxtrot Oscar uh, I didn't yeah. say F.O., but he got my drift. Uh, I was a 25-year-old. Yeah. Let me think about that. No, I was 24. I was 24, and I'm talking to the, this colonel who thought he was important, and I told him, I, didn't, I don't think you're very important at all. And three days later, I was flying a rubber dog shit out of Hong Kong. But anyway, we have a much brighter future than we think of our past. But keep in mind, no matter how, how much grace and mercy God's about ready to pour out, we would never ever appreciate it and probably not recognize it if we hadn't been down and out and almost done. And there's a lot of people in this yeah. chat room who've been down and out and almost done. And um, where is the ranch? Somebody's named D. Uh, the ranch is in Athens, Texas, if it's still available, but it's, and I think that would be the perfect place. And I realize I haven't mentioned the fourth party. Uh, there's a woman, I wonder if she's here today. Uh, I think of her as Sunshine, and I'm not sure. Uh, I think that's how she presents herself here. I know her in person. I've met her several times. And no, she's not here. But uh, she'd like to be at the ranch, and she'd like to work on uh, healthy nutrition, both animal stuff, yeah. like cattle and chickens and turkeys, and also vegetables and whatever 
whatever food we raised in very good gardens that we don't consume or our guests don't consume, we would make it available to homeless people. Uh, or, you know, when I focus on veterans, uh, that's just because I have a great love and respect for how our veterans have been abused by yeah. uh, the cabal. And I think that I am, I think I'm very articulate in being able, I think I can carry on a conversation with 10 attorneys, all of which are either Jesuits or Kabbalist. And yeah. I think I can destroy all of them probably in 90 seconds apiece. Uh, only because God has caused me to walk a certain path where I learned by doing or learned by failing. Would somebody out there that understands true Christianity, would somebody put up Proverbs 16, 9? In fact, I, I really, I know that some people, especially new people, think that I act like a dictator. Uh, and I, I'm going to look it up myself, too, mm -hmm. just to show you I can do that. And then it'll also be accurate. 16.9 says this. In his heart, a man plans his course, but the Lord determines his steps. In 1973, I wanted to be a fighter pilot. And God said, just trust me. You're going to go fly rubber dog shit out of Hong Kong, and there's a purpose I'm sending you there. So I'm going to go, uh, when you ponder that, and did anybody put up the ranch yet? Um, thank you, Cutter, for posting that. Oh, and by the way, uh, we have a contact through Brandy, and let me see if Brandy's in the chat room. Yes, she is. Uh, she yes. told me today that the lady at the Gales Hotel of Klangok, let me try it again, Klangok. Oh, that's tough. Ken Glockland. Yeah. Is that close? Almost. Can you do it perfectly for me? Somebody. I can do it perfectly. Ken Glockland. Yeah, that's perfect. That's the way. As, a Kel as a Celtic Gaelic speaker, that's the way I would say Ken Glockland. Okay. Because Gaelic is actually older than Latin, Arabic, and a whole bunch of other languages. But don't worry about that. Sorry, back to the Gales Hotel, yes. Um, I just saw something from Telstar about bar grievances. Um. Maybe, Telstar, maybe tonight after dark at your place and after dark at my place, you could call up 715-307-8XXX. Um, See, I've been very patient about any lawful reaction to these unlawful uh, court gangsters. But as the transfer yeah. of power occurs this week, uh, today is Martin Luther um, oh, yes. Got, King, yeah. uh, unfortunately, a newscaster today mispronounced King and it sounded ethnic and it was, and there's no room for that. I didn't ask to be white. I didn't ask to be born in America. I didn't ask to have responsible parents. Uh, but anyway, God has yeah. really uh, tested me and in some ways, bless me, the, the most um, well-manifested blessing he's ever given me, besides my own life, uh, was my current wife, Denise. That's proof positive that God didn't want me to uh, suffer forever uh, with discouraging thoughts. But I had a brief 25-year yes. marriage, which uh, was awful, but I got some wonderful children, and so that, you know, Sometimes you have to get through something to get something in return. And uh, I love my children and I love uh, Denise's son and I love every child until they grow up and they get old enough and obnoxious enough to offend me. And then I don't love them anymore. I just ignore them and walk away and I, I still like them. But uh, it's, it's nice to be surrounded by love. And I've got a purple limousine that these makes me sound wealthy. No, I'm not. I'm worried about money just like everyone else. Uh, but there's two ladies over here who are profound Christians. And as soon as Denise mm -hmm. and I, in fact, I think Denise and I probably would be good host if we could end this in about 20 minutes. At, uh, yeah, no, of course, of course. This is any time field, any time. I, I understand and I've got an inkling who, they are, who, these, who these ladies are and God bless them. And yet, yeah, please do, let's cut it short so that you can go and, and, and speak with them, which is uh, very important. Well, one of the things we're going to be speaking about is the mechanism that uh, I, I've got about three different or four different vectors that all aim at the ranch in Texas. 
And this pair of ladies is uh, one of those four vectors. Uh, let me see if mm -hmm. Mad Dog's here today or if M4S. Then I'm going to take a break and walk over and just check on them, and I'll be back in 60 seconds. Uh, boy, a lot of people here today. Hello. Okay, M4 is here. See. Yeah, I'm going to check out. Oh, and I see uh, Jeffrey Davis from the Kalispell area of Montana, and I see a lot of other people. I think I think Captain McHale's here. And if she is, I'll, no, maybe she's not. Well, maybe she is. There's different ways she shows up. Uh, yep, she's here. She called yeah. me about an hour before the radio show and asked me about that image where there's, off the top of my head, I think there's five people in the image. Uh, Robert David Steele, Robin Gritz, or Greitz, or whatever it is, Jason Goodman, okay. George Webb, and Craig Sawyer. And she asked me some question. I, I didn't have time to answer it. I wasn't trying to be rude. But even Denise, who knows me better than anyone in the world has ever known me, even she sometimes has a hard time believing how busy I am. And, and people say, well, you don't have to do this field. And well, actually, I do. Because God asked me to do it on December 4th of 2006. He said to expose evil. And I put... I don't put all of my energy in it every day, but for the last 12 years and two months, I've put an incredible mm -hmm. amount of energy into exposing evil. And guess what? Evil is dying uh, as some of the biggest oh, yeah. perpetrators are evil. The ones that aren't dead yet are suffering involuntary urination and worse. But I'll turn it over to you. But you just think of what, uh, you know, have you seen a picture of the ranch with the equestrian facility in Athens? Have you visually looked at that range? I have them. Yeah. I've seen it. So I've, got, I've got them stored on my computer, but I don't have these folders open. Oh, I, I can I can put it up when I get back, and I'll be I'll be right back. Uh, 60 to 120 seconds. I'll be right back. Yeah, no problemo. And I would also like to welcome to the chat room and to the live stream there are people. Like you said, I understand now how busy that you have been because... In, in the last while, I put my email address out there and I've been inundated, sometimes getting up to 160 to 220 emails a day. And I would like to pay particular welcome to a lady, I believe that's here, I don't know what name that they've chosen to use, but this is a lady that, that attended the White House on the inaugural ball, who has done a vast amount, spent a lot of time working for her cause, which is belief in the politicians and the political process, and who has got a lot of knowledge on the matters with regards to the politics and the workings behind the scenes of the the hill and the capital and the west wing shall we say that was Aidan Sorkin he came back out into the world again this week as well out of the blue he was he was the man that kind of like co-scripted the Clinton campaign back in the day and he was directly responsible for the portrayal of the presidency through the west wing which was I believe was Martin Sheen and uh, the woman from Greece but uh, Stockard Channing, yes, I did manage to remember her name. And so, yeah, these people, the old guard, as I call them, they've come back out of the woodwork. But everybody that's just joined us, welcome to the Able Danger Camp, the Armada, uh, as uh, I've been calling it lately in the emails that you people have been getting. And also I'd like to say uh, to Scott, Scott is, a, I believe he's a, a monk that uh, he communicated with me. I just got your email about 20 minutes before the show started, Scott. I will get back to you. And it's the same as everybody else out there has communicated with me. Just give me some time. I, I didn't ex ever expect to be where I am at this particular juncture in time. And I'm good at, well, when I say I'm good at talking, I like talking. When I discovered the lie that we have been under, it made me mad, it made me angry, and feel knows from experience that I can stand with a litre of whiskey and I can stand and talk for two, three, four hours on the same subject and I don't deviate. And it's my, it is my favourite subject. I don't do small talk very well, I don't discuss football, I don't discuss, well, politics. Well, that has to be discussed because that's a form of sharing, a, sharing and assimilating information. But politics is there to divide us. Politics is there just to do nothing but divide us. We don't need politicians. We can do this ourselves. We need people to run the infrastructure, to keep the roads maintained, to keep the bridges maintained. I mean, there's America. You've got over 4,500 condemned bridges. Clint Eastwood made a movie about the bridges of Madison County some time back because the roads, the infrastructures, 
They're need taken care of. What's happening to the money? It's going straight into these people's back pockets. They're taking it out of the public purse. They're giving it to their mates. This woman, Pelosi, she run up a drink spill, a drink spill of 2.1 million pounds over the course of the last 10, 15 years. I can't, don't quote me on that directly, but the information is out there. Now, how can these people go and take that out of a federal budget when they're already being paid lucratively at state level? These guys are claiming expenses. In this country, you get people claiming 13 pence in paperclip. You get people claiming money for 0.3 of a mile car journey. Why? Because they're too scared to walk out in the streets in front of we the people and Joe Public. Why? Because they'll be egged and they'll be lambasted. Why? Because most of the world knows that these guys are corrupt. But we're too scared, we're too preoccupied with working to pay the taxes to keep our lives intact and to keep raising our families to do anything about it. The Yellow Vest movement and it's spread everywhere. You won't see anything about it on the mainstream media because they're scared. They are running scared. They know they're running scared. And we, the people, have had enough. They know it. Their time is coming and it's going to be very soon. And it is going to be very soon. Like I said, the reset, the Davos thing, we haven't even touched upon that. The assassination attempt. Guys, that's plain and simple. Phil McConnell revealed and actually... Like he said, he was partly responsible for it because they took his intellectual property and they manifested into it 9-11 and all the other plane crashes that have been deliberately done since has been a result of the bore. So it's not too complicated to imagine. Pelosi and her buddies, they're on their way to meet. NATO was a thing of the past. There's a new organization now called PESCO. That's where she was going to go and meet. She was going to go and do deals with the cabal over in Europe. They were then going to do a tight sightseeing tour of Egypt. Then they were going to head over to Afghanistan. And while they were in a way out of the country, that's when there was supposed to be a cat presidency and to take to decapitate America, which is what they tried to do on 9/11. They haven't forgotten that plans. They're, it's an imperative that they do because they failed to disarm America. Pol Pot took the weapons. Hitler took the weapons. Cambodia took the weapons. China took the weapons. And the Americans, no. Because of the Second Amendment, you have got the God-given right to defend yourself. It's still in the British Constitution as well, guys. It's still in the Bill of Rights, 1688-89. You are allowed to use anything to preserve your life if you feel that it's intimidated and threatened by anyone. It's a God-given right. And nobody has got the authority to take these rights away from you. Nobody does. And they've, they've, they've tried to disarm the Americans. That's why you've got this spate of fake school shootings, all orchestrated by the same factions, mostly in the same place, using the same actors, which isn't very smart and bright on their part anyway. But then again, it'd be pretty difficult to get God fearing loving soul out there to go and take part in what they know is a horrendous calumny that they're forcing upon humanity in that belief. But anyway, I'm rambling on again. Like I said, Phil, I would be more than I'd be. I've got. An, I've got. An, actually, as of this week, I've got an extra special reason why I would, for the first time in my life, I really, really, really would like to go to America because I met a beautiful, beautiful soul who, through the course of emails and a voice chat over the last couple of days, has taught me a lot and taught me that I don't need to be so aggressive, that I don't need to bombard and lambast people, I don't need to call them stupid, I don't need to call them ignorant because they don't know about this thing because they should, but not everybody has had the same amount of time to study these things. Why? Because they're too busy, nine to five, they come home, microwave dinners, get to bed, get to sleep, to get up to do the same thing again, when that's not necessary. We could be all living in relative luxury, in a relative paradise of peace, happiness, harmony and prosperity, the way that God intended for us to be in the first place. And this goes beyond colour, it goes beyond race, it goes beyond creed, because we're all equal in his eyes. And when we get back for the day of judgment, we are going to be all equal in his eyes. And as for the Clintons, the Pelosi's, all of these scumbags that have been out there, that have been part of this cabal, that know what they're doing is inherently evil. Well, we know what their fate is going to be, and God willing, we can sit there and look at them in hell and say, well, you had the choice, you chose the wrong path, obviously. But again, feel sorry. Uh, yeah, 8.25, we've been going for about 8, well, on the end, whenever we started, at 7 o'clock, I think, so I know you've got guests there. So, yeah, thanks to everybody that's joined us in the able. Oh, Danger. hang on. Please continue to like, please continue, go on, go on, sorry, yeah. actually, go on.
don't run off yet. Those ladies are willing to wait. But uh, NWA.I asked me, oh, wait a minute, I just found a picture of the ranch. Uh, and I'll put up a link in the chat room before I leave. Uh, uh -huh. Let me just show you the, uh, the ranch house. And this will get a lot of people that have been here for a while. They'll say, oh, yeah, I remember that place. And this is the uh, Target Ranch. Let me go to the chat room and put this in. Do uh, do 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 do. I, I'm not good at doing seven things at once. Upload a file. Okay. Athens Ranch. I should be able to find that. Oh, there it is. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, now I'm going to upload it. And then I'll explain something about it. And then I'll answer NWI's question. Okay. Uh, if anybody has the link to this ranch, that's the main ranch house. That is, um, that's where Denise yeah. and I would live. And um, do do we need a 8,000 square foot house? Nope, we sure don't. In fact, I think we'd be perfectly happy living in a caravan in Wales. But it's yeah. not a matter of where you live or how you live, but it's more a matter of, of what opportunities you're given and what, what uh, what you do with the opportunities to share the grace of God with anybody. Um, I will put up a link to the entire ranch before I take these ladies and Denise up to my house. But this ranch has 450 acres. It's got four homes on it. It's got a 33, wait a minute. Somebody has to do the math. Uh, 330 feet long and 100 feet clear span building. That's about it's somewhere around 32,600 or 33,000 square feet equestrian facility, mm -hmm. 66 horse stalls. And what we would do, there'd be, as of right now, I think there would be four people living there full time. And we would uh, host veterans. I always say veterans because we're going to call up McConnell Veterans Ranch. That's not my idea. Two other people came up yeah. with that. But there's a lot of humanitarian things we can do with that property. And these two ladies that are over there waiting for me to take them up to my house and continue our introductory conversations. Uh, the way that mm -hmm. I know, the way that I know 100% for sure that if there's going to be a McConnell's Veteran Ranch, it has to be in that area is because out of 52,000, excuse me, 5,200 F4 Phantoms that were built, uh, I flew about 45 of them, and the one yeah. that is at Canton, uh, VZCM, VZCM, or an easier way. In fact, would somebody please just Google this? Google Field McConnell's Jet, and then image, and then post it. Because the entire CIA, Navy Intelligence, FBI, sh uh, shadow government, they're all wondering... <laughs> How it is that I have a Field McConnell's jet. I'm smiling. This is not pride. This is humor. You know, God, uh, God has really slaughtered these people. Like they're already slaughtered, and they're just learning about it as each one of the indictments is put into action. But uh, victory's yeah. coming. Victory's been ordained, and uh, we're gonna. I'm hoping that by Veterans Day this year we'll have some type of a large function at the, the Veterans Ranch. Uh, and I will, before we leave, I will put that up. Uh, NWA.I uh, asked me to talk about something. And he was, I think the subject was the shutdown. And the shutdown is really a TF. Yeah, there you go, Cutter, thank you. That airplane right yeah. there, out of 5,200, that one right there has a very close relationship to me. Uh, and when yep. they got that airplane down there in Canton, Texas, they wanted somebody who had a relationship with that airplane to come down and be the uh, grand marshal of a parade. And in fact, if anybody wants to see that YouTube, I'll put it in the chat room, but I'll also verbalize it. Canton, Texas, veteran fighter, and my name, F-I-E-L-D-M-C-C-O-N-N-E-L-L. -L. If you Google that, or no, if you go to YouTube and put that in, you can see the ceremony where we put that airplane on a pedestal. And see, that's just like some of us that love God. We 
put him on a pedestal, which he doesn't really probably enjoy because he's just doing what he was meant to do. And some of us are just doing what God meant for us to do. So there's no mm. room for ego. When, whenever I start feeling egotistical, which I honestly, I can act egotistical if it's good for shoving something up somebody's tailpipe. And I'm fairly yep. adroit at that. But you know, <laughs> if you know what Jesus suffered for three hours on a Wednesday afternoon, well, his father was kind enough to turn the world dark. So his suffering wouldn't be visibly obvious to people at great range. But once you realize what Jesus did for us, uh, I think it's very difficult to have a modicum of ego. It's just you can have a vast amount of thanks. Uh, back to what, uh, what's his name, NW, I, I asked me about what's going on. Listen, the 30-day window has come and gone. So the temporary uh, shutdown is now uh, 30 days plus mature, which means the shutdown can be turned into permanent RIF. And I believe that the senior executive service is going to be pretty much totally RIFed. Uh, I'm hoping and praying that Circo will be next up in the batting order. But uh, a couple of other organizations that most of us in this chat room uh, don't like, the Internal Revenue Service, which is a private corporation headquartered in Puerto Rico for the benefit of the Queen of England, uh, that's going away. The Federal Reserve's going away. Now, when I say the IRS is going away, will we have taxes? Well, to my understanding, which is not complete, we will have one tax. We will have a tax on 17% roughly uh, on new purchases. Now, the way I read that in perfect yeah. English is if you buy a brand new car, you'll pay tax. If you buy a used car, you won't. So, and once again, that's my opinion. That is not, uh, don't take that to the bank, but I'd be really slow in figuring out your taxes this year, because if you're figuring out your taxes before April 15th, which they're probably still lying about and saying that's the deadline, well, the whole IRS is going to I think it's already effectively shut down, but it's going to continue. Um, let's get back to the 30 days. Okay, the shutdown that was temporary can now become, uh, in large part, permanent because of the 30-day maturing. Uh, today is a national holiday, and uh, the 29th, which is next Tuesday, is the State of the Union. But in between the national holiday and the, st and the State of the Union is the Davos financial meeting. Now, Trump has come out and said he's not going, uh, but you got to keep in mind that this is the world's best chess player. So if at the last minute he goes over and shows up and, and shares some good news with the global financial interest, and the good news would mm -hmm. be that all of us former debt slaves are now free. And then he would, so he could do that internationally. I'm not saying he's going to, but he is a real, uh, he's a pretty hard guy to outthink. Uh, and who knows what he's going to do, but I don't care what he's going to do. I'm all for it. And if I can anticipate it, yeah. I'll go ahead and publish it. Uh, and people would say, well, that's impolite to Trump. No, it's not, because I'm a shit screen. I can put something out before he does it. And if it works out, people think I'm smart. And if it doesn't work out, Trump says, boy, I'm sure glad I didn't communicate with that guy. Uh, but he doesn't have to yeah. communicate with me because I communicate with him. And, yeah. and so he... Fine. But he puts into action certain things that I've, I've really written letters to him. In fact, when David and I were working together, we wrote about 330 letters to Trump through John Kelly. And believe me, uh, they got the message. Uh, I, I know firsthand for sure that three, no, I'm going to upgrade that to four. And I think I can, I think I can actually say at this point, six senior generals uh, three in the Army and three in the Marine Corps. They understand what I'm doing. They understand why I'm doing it. They understand how I'm doing it. And they're probably very happy that I'm doing it so they don't get tasked. T-A-S-K-E-D. Yeah. They, they might not feel comfortable doing it. But listen, God called me to do this. He told me to expose evil. And I, I can do this all day long until I go to heaven. And it's, you know, it's, it's, a, uh, it's a valuable expenditure of my time and I'm 69 and I'm not going to live forever but I'm going to outlive the people that tried to destroy the United States of America 
uh, from the, uh, the Vatican Jesuit camp, the City of London camp, the NATO camp, uh, and worst of all, the treasonous rat bastards in the District of Columbia, one of which is my only sibling, and uh, you know, she should have been smart enough to figure out that I'm the answer to her evil. But she's not that smart. She's pretty much full time being an evil lesbian, trying to destroy the United yeah. States of America that provided her with a great youth, a great education. And uh, unfortunately, she was taken sidetracked by the CIA at the East West Center in Hawaii uh, because she, uh, some other lesbian, got her in the group. And the rest is history. And if anybody doesn't know who my sister was, Christine Marcy with a K, K-R-I-S-T-I-N-E with a K. So the answer to NWAI, I think between the 30 day deadline, which is passed and the State of the Union, I think that uh, the United States of America and therefore the world is going to have some very encouraging news. So if, um, if you're not offended, do you think we, oh, I wanted to talk to you. What time are you going to bed? Roughly. Um, well, tomorrow morning. I've oh. got a whole pile of stuff I need to do. There's a whole bunch of things I need to catch up on. So I'm, I'm, I'm here. Okay, I'm uh, going to uh, Skype uh, you. From, I'm yeah. going to Skype you from home to talk about some personal items. Okay. Okay, dog chief. Looking yeah. forward to that. Okay. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Uh, wait. Let's see if anybody's got. Phil, can you talk about the assassination attempt? Yes, and I think I met you in Dallas, Texas. It's my. It's my belief that Nancy Pelosi and Christine Marcy basically copycatted 9-11 uh, when Pelosi wanted to be outside the country over in Europe, just like Henry Shelton wanted to be outside the country and over in Europe so that he had plausible deniability about 9-11, just like Pelosi would have plausible deniability about the assassination of President Trump. But unfortunately, they used this the same dumb shit planners. And uh, in yeah. the case of 9-11, uh, the Henry Shelton, who is the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, wanted to take a 757. In the military, they call it a C-32. He wanted to take that. Mm -hmm. And uh, the good guys in the military said, no, you can't take that C-32. We'll give you this old C-135 called the Speckled Trout. The registration number, Google this number, you'll find it, 61-2669. Okay, so that was a white hat that was getting involved to do good things against a bad entity. Sort of like the same yeah. white hat or a similar white hat who imputed a 41-minute delay in the departure of United 93 from uh, the Newark airport. And that 41-minute delay blocked, and notice it's 41 minutes. Uh, G.H.W. Yeah. Bush was POTUS 41. So whoever blocked 9-11 was shoving a giant hand grenade up G.H.W. Bush's tailpipe, uh, which is the job of anybody who swears an allegiance to the United States of America. And if they get in the military and they swear to protect America from all enemies, foreign and domestic, even if it's your own sister, well, uh, that's easily done. I mean, you don't have to be a rocket science scientist to do what Able Danger has been doing. All you have to be is called. C-A-L-L-E-D. If God calls you to any form of service, he will give you every tool you need. If somebody asks you a question that you're not sure of, God will give you the answer. And I learned that in a divorce court. When uh, a judge, I was in the defense booth and the judge, I told an attorney, uh, I had a hostile ex-wife. Actually, I've had more than one. But this particular hostile ex-wife had a real bitch of an attorney who, let me think of her name. I like to give credit where credit is richly due. Mary Marin, M-A-R-I-N-G. She's on the North Dakota Supreme Court, and her husband used to be involved in cocaine trafficking. I wonder if I mentioned <laughs> that under oath. Uh, but anyway, this, this old little uh, typical bar attorney said, Mr. McConnell, you're going to pay my client X number of dollars a month. I said, no, I'm not. And she said, yes, you are. And you're going to do this and you're going to do that. And I said, no, I'm not. And she was, you know, she wasn't used to having a thinker in the box. Uh, I could go another direction right now, but I won't. Uh, the judge, 
who was sitting there reading the Fargo Forum with his glasses down like a, he was reading the paper while this court was in session. And by the way, what is his name? Uh, I can picture him right now. Judge, Judge, Norman Bacchus. Norman is quite easy, N-O-R-M-A-N, Bacchus, uh, B-A-C-K-E-S. Norman Bacchus put his paper down, looked at me, and he said, and I was 35 maybe, or six, six seven, right in there. He said, <clears throat> Mr. McConnell, do you understand that I'm the judge and that I've ordered you to pay this? My head spun around faster than Linda Blair's of The Exorcist, <laughs> and God put these words in my mouth. I looked him right in the eye, and his paper shaking, because he knows here it comes, and I said, you're not the judge that I stand under. And he thought, holy shit. Yeah. Then he picked his paper back up, said, continue. But anyway, I uh, because I knew, <laughs> I knew this, this shitty little woman attorney, I knew she was not used to being upstaged in front of a judge. So I said, uh, maybe you didn't get my point, Mary, Mary Marion. I said, I didn't say I wouldn't, I wouldn't pay it, or maybe I did. But if you're going to try to get money out of me, you got to garnish me because I'm not doing it deliberately because I know what you're involved in and so do you. Uh, basically, let's not waste any more time on that. If if anybody will ask God for help, he's, he's very faithful. He will help oh, yes. you. But you know, you can't ask him for help and then decide, oh, God help me. I think I can go back and surfing and chasing skirts and drinking beer all day long. Listen, there's nothing wrong with beer, but what the Bible says is when Jesus comes back, make sure you're ready. Uh, and God, I'm ready. Yeah. So uh, I'll call you from home, gobsmack. And uh, I, won't, I won't delay for the big red button. But when I get home, if I get a chance, no, I won't. I'll do that before I leave. I will get the link to the ranch in Texas, and I'll post it in the chat room, and then I'll say goodbye. So between me and you, Gobsmack, uh, can we separate now to rejoin in a couple hours? Certainly, Chief. Yes, St. Okay. Tony's, and I shall speak to you later. Yeah, I'll, on, I'll email you when I can take a Skype call, and then we can call at your convenience. Mensamax just put up the three, two, one.